Welcome to Doc Talk Live. This is Dr. Brad Goodman, and I'm at um, the uh, the Schaefer Plastic Surgery Center. Uh, Dr. Schaefer is behind me, and I'm with Brandy Carboni and his nurse Whitney. Whitney, and uh, I'm going to turn this all around, but uh, but we are here to do a live laser thing to the face. So I'm going to get myself off. I'm going to turn this around somehow. Let's can turn it around. Yep, there we go. So now I've turned it around. Um, I'm focused on you, Dr. Schaefer, and Brandy, and that's the laser machine. Okay, so. So we've got uh, our parameters, and this is a hybrid laser, so what we're doing is we're resurfacing part of the upper layer of the skin and also treating the lower layer of skin. That's where the hybrid nature of this. Two separate wavelengths, which determine the depth of penetration. And uh, we set some other parameters here. I've gone pretty aggressive with her. She has some texture issues. She has some pigment issues. And so the surface treatment is going to treat the texture issues. The deeper penetration, which is the, the uh, 1470 wavelength, will, will penetrate deeper into the skin and treat some of those pigment issues. All right? So, so first of all, I'm going to try to talk loud. You all talk loud, too, because it is noisy in here. There's a, a, a superficial component to this and a deep. That's the superficial right. is for what? The superficial is for the texture issues. And the deep is for the pigment. The deep is for the pigment and also to stimulate collagen. Okay. The deeper uh, treatment treats with heat and coagulation. The surface treatment treats with resurfacing or ablation. So you have a non-ablated component and you have an ablated component. Okay. And the benefit of that is... The non-ablated treatments, when you use them exclusively, there's very little downtime, which the patients really like. But you don't get the outcomes that you like to see. The ablated treatments, you get better outcomes, but you have more downtime. The halo, which is the hybrid of the two, combines the best of both options. Okay. Let's, let me just show Brandy's face here. <laughs> You'll notice that we've got, you know, these are lead shields to protect our eyes. Okay. We all have eye protection. Now, should our viewers at home be wearing eye protection? This one we can't get transmitted uh, through, through that. But, uh, all right. This is a very safe treatment, very safe laser. She's got topical to numb her face. It's, it's got an um, exhaust that uh, uh, will vacuum up any of the debris, and it also has a cooling element here that's blowing cool air on the surface of her skin to help with for comfort Alright, let's do this. Alright, so we've mapped out the areas and we're getting ready to start. We're going to start with her right cheek um, and the laser will tell us when we're done. So here we go. Now, can I talk to you while you do this, or are you focused here? Um, I'm focused, but I can talk. Okay. So, why do you have to do this? Why can't your assistant do this? What What is What is unique about your hands? Well, I think in general, it's it's just good practice for you know anybody can learn how to do this and learn about the technology. Um, however. There are laws in the state of Alabama that govern um, who can perform these procedures and if they have an ablative component, so your, your ablating tissue, which this laser does, the medical laws of the state require that a doctor perform this procedure. Okay. Right? So now, our state requires that a physician is doing this. That's correct. Now I can see like her... Her, her skin is like turning uh, white. Yeah, you can see and that's the superficial component of this. And you can see what we programmed into the laser is about a 20% resurfacing or ablated component. And that's what you're seeing, the white specks. The rest of the treatment, you're just seeing redness. And that's the deep, deeper penetrating element of the hybrid, which doesn't resurface the surface. It's treating the deeper aspects of the skin. 
Okay, and if there's any questions out there, feel free to type them in. Does this hurt at all, Brandy? No, no pain at all. No. Is it going to hurt tomorrow? Because you numbed her up, right? She'll, she'll notice some warmth tonight, and she'll get a, a, a slight barrier treatment that's non uh, petroleum related because we don't want to lock in, um, you know. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to completely coat the skin and not allow it to breathe. So get like a Cetaphil or water-based uh, coating for her skin, just to protect it from the, the little bit of surface ablation that we've done. But she had a full ablation, or what's called a fractional ablation, which uh -huh. is much more aggressive. We want to put a, a thicker coat, like a oil-based coat, of skincare on her to protect her from uh, drying. Will you work tomorrow, Brandy? Yes. Yeah. Is she going to be okay to work tomorrow? She'll, have, she'll be fine. You'll, you'll be able to see some of the uh, some of what we've done tomorrow. She'll have kind of little red dots where these white dots are. And some of the deeper um, uh, areas, the deeper channels that we've created with this, um, you're going to see some uh, brownish degree known as mint. Okay, so now... That believe is telling me that we completed this side, so now we go to the other side. Okay. How does the laser know you completed that side? Uh, because of because of the parameters that we put in. Again, twenty percent resurfacing, and it calculates that as it's doing it. So once we reach the twenty percent, it alarms and tells us. Okay. And then we just move to the other side. All right. So we're going to do the other side now. You can see here where we've zeroed out. And once that bar gets completely up, it's up to 20 percent, 20 percent of the surface that we calculate by doing the mapping, and then the alarm again will go on to go to the forehead. So uh, there is a comment about gloves on the hands. Does that matter? No, it doesn't. It, uh, the only reason I would use gloves if there's residual of the uh, the topical on there, and it would make my fingers numb. But we wiped all that off. And using my hand just allows me to tighten the skin and get a better contact with the, the okay treatment. there's no bleeding here okay nothing like that so how that. long before she can wash her face or shower her face uh, she'll, be able to, she'll be able to wash uh, in the morning okay yeah. trying to oh, focus on this we have to, we have to uh, wipe off the debris now, again it, there is some ablation that's taking place here so there's a little bit of debris Alright, what is the recovery time? When is her face going to look normal? It looks good after uh, three days. Three days, yeah. that's all. Yeah. But she's, you're going to go to work tomorrow, right? Yeah. And you're going to post your picture tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, she'll post a picture. So three days is the recovery time. I guess y'all can hear us because it's quite loud in here. Now, um, what about topicals? How do you get... I'm going to use the halo laser treatment. How did we get to this point as opposed to some other treatment for her skin? Well, there's, there's different, you know, there's different options for people's lifestyle and what they're trying to accomplish and at what age uh, their skin is, not just physiologic or, or chronologic, but physiologic. If someone's been in the sun a lot, has a lot of sun damage, they can be in their 20s and, and have a lot of photo damage. How about if they have like a little spot on their face, like a, a, a brownish spot? Does, how does that get taken it'll, care of? It'll improve that, but those, those things can be problematic and often need multimodality treatment, topicals, different types of uh, light-based treatments, including this and others that can you know, maximize the outcome. With, with the it seems quite complicated. How does one decide? And, and why would one see a plastic surgeon as opposed to a dermatologist? Or is it, you know, how, it's very, you know, there seems to be a lot of different things out there for skin. Yeah, and, and, and so what, what specialty they choose is really kind of patient choice. You know, obviously dermatologists are experts in the skin. We deal with the skin a lot too, not only with the surface and topical issues, but with the surgical aspects of it, in terms of, you know, doing facial surgery and that sort of thing. Um, there are a lot of dermatologists that use lasers. Several of them use the halo. 
plastics are going to use these as well because um, we're not just treating um, surface issues, we're also trying to rejuvenate, and that's the, kind of the main thing that a aesthetic surgeon like myself would do. Okay, well, is there any more questions out there? If there are, type them in quickly. So you're almost done, really. Well, we're moving along pretty quickly because we're, uh, you can see how much of the face we've already done. We'll do each half of the forehead and then the nose, so we're, we're over halfway through. Okay. So, again, I'm with Dr. Christopher Schaefer at Schaefer Plastic Surgery, and we're doing the halo laser procedure, which is a hybrid. Did I get that right? That's correct. And um, are there other laser treatments that you do besides this, or yeah. is this the, the one you do all the time? So we can do more, a, a deeper and more aggressive ablative treatment. We're just going to, you see all the white patches on here. Speak louder. We do a more aggressive resurfacing treatment, which would resurface the entire area of the skin. Uh-huh. That's called total, total laser resurfacing. That's more of like a seven to ten day downtime. Okay. Would you use this same machine or a different machine? The same machine, but a different attachment. And that's the nice thing about this laser platform is you can use different hand pieces. The software allows us to do different treatments with it. This hand piece right here is called broadband light. That's a non-ablative treatment. It's not a laser, but it's the same concept, energized light vascularity, again, pigmentation problems, and just overall skin health. It stimulates the deeper elements. Is there going to be much swelling? There'll be, very, there'll be, a, there'll, there'll be a little bit, but not a lot. And that's when, what you say the recovery is going to be, what would you say, three days? Three or days. Three days. And it, it, it can be less. You can, this is a tunable treatment, so you can dial up the treatments to, to create more injury, which is going to create more results. Again, you can adjust it to what the patient needs in their lifestyle. What if she took anti-inflammatory medicines like Advil? Could she take that for pain and would it help? Or will she have pain even? She'll have a little bit. And Advil, if she needs anything, would probably be the most that she would need. It won't, it won't change the outcome if she were to take those medicines. Oh, okay. You can do a halo of the neck, and you also can do it at the decollete area. You can even do it at the backs of the hands and other sun damaged areas of the skin. Does this help wrinkles? Fine lines and wrinkles. It does help fine lines and wrinkles? Yes. How does it compare to Botox? Well, the, the wrinkles that you treat with the halo are going to be finer and are going to be caused by gravity and just sun damage. Botox is going to treat dynamic wrinkles that are caused by muscle activity. So it's, it's really two different kinds of wrinkles. Okay. But you can get improvement in dynamic wrinkles with this. You're not going to get them to the degree that you can get with something like Botox or Discord or Juvo. Okay, so those sort of deep wrinkles from squinting and stuff like that is more a Botox issue. But damage type wrinkles like from sun is this is the laser. This, this, the, yeah, the surface treatments like this laser and the total resurfacing laser are going to maximize. And again, when do you do the halo versus the total resurface? Um, I would do the total resurfacing for someone who has a lot of wrinkling, who's older, a lot more sun damage, and has a lot more free time to recover. This is for more of an active person who wants to try to maximize their outcome and minimize their downtime. Okay. And what do you do for the for the dark spot again? A broadband light is going to be helpful with that. Topical ointments are also help, helpful with that. And something like this, a combination of something like this. A total okay. resurfacing laser isn't going to work on the pigmentation. The pigmented cells are in the deeper layers of the skin. So you got to get deep. you got to get deep to treat those, and that's where these non-ablative treatments work. All right. Well, Dr. Schaefer, people who are watching this on the rebroadcast may have questions, so uh, hopefully uh, you can get on the page and answer them as well Absolutely. and share it. All right. Thank you all for watching. Brandy, thank you.
Um, and so, Whitney, thank you. And we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye.